Good morning. This is our weekend message of encouragement. And we, we thank the Lord that His Word always encourages us. And we pray that the Holy Spirit will lead and guide in this message and build you up in the Word of God and by the Holy Spirit. Let's pray. Our Lord Jesus, we come to you this morning. We thank you for your, your Holy Word, your living Word. You, Lord, you are the living Word. And we depend upon you to speak to us as we examine the Word of God. We pray, Holy Spirit, uh, open up the hearts to receive. And, and I pray if there's some that aren't right with the Lord that they would uh, repent and get right today. Lord, we know you're coming soon. We want to be prepared. And I pray, Lord, speak to each heart a word of encouragement today. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's blow the shofar. When we come to the Word of God, we're always depending upon the Holy Spirit, not only to uh, anoint the Word, but to speak to us and, and plant it deep in our heart, in our spirit, that we won't just hear it, we won't just learn, but we'll do it, that we will do the Word of God, we'll live the Word of God. We're going to go to uh, Romans 8, 29, and the, the message today is to be like Christ, to be like Christ. Romans 8, 29 says, for whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. We are being conformed to the image of his only begotten Son. It's, it's just an awesome thing. As we, come, as we give our life to the Lord Jesus Christ and we allow the Holy Spirit to work in our life, we're being changed, constantly being changed into the image of the Lord. Jesus is moving in our life and uh, through us, people can see the Lord Jesus Christ in our life. We're not like those that don't know the Lord. You hear many Christians, uh, many times people say, uh, Christians say, I wanna be like the Apostle Paul or, or some other Bible leader. And Paul's ministry, he did great things. Uh, he, had, he had powerful ministry and he did much uh, uh, powerful uh, ministry uh, in the word and in, for the gospel of Christ. Yet Paul's goal was to be like Christ. He, he didn't say, I want to follow this ministry or that ministry. And we shouldn't say that. We should, we should desire to be like Christ. So his goal and our goal should always be to be like Christ. To follow him only. To follow him only. A lot of people nowadays... They pick out a Christian leader and they, they want to be just like them. They want to talk the way they talk and, and, and some even try to dress like them and act like them. Uh, that's not it. We want to follow Jesus and Him only. We want to copy His teachings. We want to we wanna spread the Word of God. Uh, we want to drink of His Spirit. We want to be saturated with the Holy Spirit. We want to place our feet in His footsteps. We want to walk like Jesus walked. We want to talk like Jesus taught. Put, it, put your feet in his footprints. Oh, to be more like Christ is our goal. To be more like Jesus. Again, to be conformed to the image of his only begotten son. In, in Romans 9.23, we, we need to let Christ shine through us. Romans 9.23, And that he might make known the riches of his glory on the vessels of mercy, which he had prepared before beforehand for glory you are being prepared for glory you are you are you are a vessel that the glory of christ is to shine through to be more like him to be more like him is our goal ephesians 1 and 5 uh, sons sons and daughters act like their parents and here it says having predestined us to adoption as sons by christ jesus to himself according to the good pleasure of his will. And uh, sons and daughters look to their father to be like, to be like their father, to walk and, and, uh, and copy the good traits, the good teachings. In Ephesians 1 and 11 tells us we have an inheritance in him. In him also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestined according to the purpose of him who works all things according to the counsel of his will. It was his will to choose you 
as his son or his daughter, and it's his will to give you this inheritance that you you are not you are now part of the family of God. You're you are you are related by the power of the Holy Spirit and by the blood of Jesus. You you actually now that you have received Christ as your Lord and Savior and the blood of Jesus covers your life, you are related to the Lord by the bloodline. We are being changed to be more and more like him. Every day we're being changed to be more and more like him. Oh, to be like Christ is our goal. Again, we just can't say that enough. To be like Christ is our goal. 2 Corinthians 3.18, we're being changed. But we all with an unveiled face behold as in a mirror the glory of the Lord are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory just as by the Spirit of the Lord. You're being changed from glory to glory. You're constantly being changed. If you surrender to the Lord and submit to the work of the Holy Spirit and the Word of God, you're being changed. And, and from glory to glory means from brightness to brightness. It's you're, you're, you're being changed constantly in a, in a wonderful way, uh, becoming more like Him. Colossians 1.13 We've been, we've been moved out of that kingdom of darkness. We don't belong to sin. We don't belong to Satan. We don't belong to this world. Everything that has to do with darkness, with unholiness, we have been taken, we have been moved out of, out of that locale or out of that uh, neighborhood into the kingdom. Uh, he has, Colossians 1.13, we've been moved into his kingdom. He has delivered us from the power of darkness and conveyed us or moved us into the kingdom of his son of his, the son of his love so we have been conveyed or moved into the kingdom of the glory of god we want to be like christ we want to do his will not just to be like him but then to be obedient to him and to do his will following the encouragement and the instructions of great christian leaders uh, to future leaders and to all of us. I, I want to read some quotes uh, before we close in prayer. Uh, great, great preachers that have spoken to younger preachers and to younger Christians about their future in Christ. We are called to leadership for the sake of the sheep. Look, look to your heart and watch what you say. Is it Christ-like? We're called to leadership. Everybody is called to leadership. You're called to lead somebody to the Lord. And you're called to leadership for the sake of the sheep. Oh, to be more like Christ so that we can be used of him. Uh, another leader, Robert Munger, said uh, to leaders, a prepared messenger is more important than a prepared message. Much more uh, important for the messenger to be prepared. So don't, don't just live like the world and then say, well, I wanted to witness to people, but it doesn't come out right. Pre prepare yourself before the Lord. Be in fellowship with the Lord. Be in constant communication with the Lord. And then the message will flow. A prepared messenger is more important than a prepared message. Ian e. Bounds, who wrote a lot about prayer, he, he was saying to young preachers, I believe this was at a graduation ceremony, study holiness and walk in it. Study holiness, study how to walk in a holy way, how to walk according to God's word and walk in it. That, that's what we should be specializing in as leaders in the body of Christ. Your usefulness depends upon this, that you study holiness and you walk in it. Then he said, a prayerless preacher is not a preacher. A prayerless preacher is not a preacher. And one leader said of preachers, if you are called to speak the highest things, then by the same necessity, you must display the highest things. If you're called, and this, there's nothing more, there's nothing more important on the word of, on the on the face of the earth than the word of God. If you're called to speak these highest things, then we need to display the highest level of living before Christ. Oh, to be more like Christ. One preacher, Sidlow Baxter said, no man who is full of himself can ever truly preach Christ who emptied himself for us. I got to repeat that. No man who is full of himself can ever truly preach Christ, 
Christ who emptied himself for us. He, he is creator God and he became lowly man and he didn't defend himself. He offered himself to be sacrificed on, on, on the cross. He emptied himself completely uh, for us. How can we go about being puffed up and full of ourselves, uh, preach the gospel of Christ when we're preaching a message of someone who emptied himself entirely? Jonathan Edwards, the great uh, revival preacher uh, before the Civil War, said, I go out to preach with two propositions in mind, two, two purposes in mind. First, that every person ought to give his life to Christ. That's, that's the urgency, that every person ought to give their life to Christ. But they don't always do that. And then his second purpose is, whether or not anyone else gives Christ his life, I will give him mine. So the preacher must be always surrendering their life to the Lord if they're going to be effective in ministry, even if no one else gets saved. There's, there's, a, there's an old story about a, a young preacher going out to practice his message. And, and he, was, uh, he went out into the field, sat under a tree, and he's, he's preaching and, and practicing this message. And there's animals around. And he thought, oh, Lord, uh, the church has hardly any people in it, but, but I've got animals listening to me, and they, they can't get saved. So, Lord, why, what am I doing? And, and right about then, a man called out from the tree above him and, and came down and gave his life to the Lord. You never know when somebody is listening to the gospel message. Be faithful. Oh, to be like Christ, to be more like him, and to be faithful to the message and be obedient to him. That's our goal. Let's go to prayer. I pray that these words encourage you today. Uh, every one of us, you say, well, that's for ministers. Every one of us, every one of us is a minister of the gospel of Christ. Every one of us has opportunity to share the gospel of Christ. Lord, I pray if there's one listening today and they don't know you as Lord and Savior, that today they will give their life to you. It's not only about asking you to come into our life, but we want to give you our life and allow you to be Lord of our life, that we will no longer be in control and, and dictating and commanding this be done and that be done, but Lord, we will surrender to you and follow you and be obedient to you that you will truly be the king of the kingdom of our life. We, we don't want to be king of our life. We want you to be king of our life. I pray, Lord, over the church today that this word of encouragement will speak not only to leaders, Bible teachers, uh, Sunday school teachers, but it will speak to every believer in Christ. For we know every one of us, the day that we give our life to you, we can lead somebody else. Follow me. I have just followed Christ should be our message. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Uh, listen again on Wednesday for another study, 2 Corinthians chapter 10. God bless.